In a time when socialising is a crime and social media is alive, Sophie hides feelings of loneliness inside, which she covers with a smile. As the world is put on hold, with the duration untold, we're merely left to see how it will all unfold. And Sophie, like many of us, had plans, places to go, people to see, things to know. The mission of 2020, however unsuccessful, was to go to Africa, a surprise trip for Coco. It's key to know though, Sophie is a key worker. Since the beginning of lockdown, she's hardly sat down, doing overtime as her thoughts are in overdrive. She spent most of her youth somewhat regulated and educated. Internally, there was always a desire to inspire and to support others to achieve and see higher, to seek, to know, to grow. Sports captain and at times class clown, an opportunity to be her best she would never pass down. Mr. Clark loved her spark. During PSHE, she'd ignite the whole class with debate. A seeker of knowledge and slayer of hate, according to Leah, her BFF, bestie, soul sis, slash best mate. But her favourite person in the whole wide world was, and is, Coco, her granddad. Together, they would explore the world, the answers she seeks, from the moment she was able to walk and speak. Why is that the sky and not the sea we see? Together they learned and laughed with love. Secret handshakes, smiles and hugs. Coco came to Liverpool from Ghana in the 60s. At the age of 18, young, ambitious and determined to make a better life for himself. When Sophie was little, he showed her photographs of his childhood. She was enchanted. It was then that she hoped for his wish to return home one day to be granted. So, fast forward to 2020, and Sophie had the secret trip of a lifetime booked for her and Coco. But fate landed her a low blow, and she couldn't stop the voice in her head from controlling her emotions. No one's seen the challenge coming now. And with Mission Africa now a no-go, the next challenge was a bigger one. Being separated from her beloved Coco. With distance grows distance. And a feeling of resistance with missed calls and misconstrued messages. No contact, not even allowed on the premises. Keeping a distance, not wanting to listen deeply inside feeling something is missing. He felt abandoned, also hiding feelings of loneliness inside. You see, it was Sophie's job to look after elderly people as a support worker. But Coco felt like he needed and should have air support during this time. Left feeling lost and lonely, he pushed her further away. Sophie got mad and defensive because she was just trying to do what was best for him, making plans to see him smile and reignite his fire. And although she kept smiling at work, Sophie's inner thoughts began to eat her up. So to calm herself down, Sophie took a pen and a book and began to write. It's the second Sunday since the fallout. Don't even want to get out of bed these days. Checking the call log for missed missed calls. Not missed at all. More incoming than outgoing. Feeling more introverted than outgoing. Still feel somewhat surreal. I still don't know what to feel. And Sophie's book became her best friend, her confidant. The one who would listen without judgement and offer healing. And for Coco, it was his window boxes that listened to his inner voice. And as Coco carried on pruning and watering, Sophie's pen seemed to take on a life of its own. 
She needed Coco to hear her heartfelt words, but she couldn't speak them aloud. Just like him, stubborn and proud. So one day, on her way to work, she posted something through Coco's door. I hate the fact that you're not here to talk, so I thought I'd write you a letter and tell you all the things that I'd like to tell you. Like I miss you. The way that you'd kiss me on my forehead, telling me about my third eye and my soul's importance. And you know that life is twofold, yin and yang. I just miss being close to you. Things between us don't feel like they're supposed to. So you tell me what you propose we do. He felt ashamed for not being the grown up in the relationship. Over the years, the roles had reversed and he hadn't even realised. He wanted to write back straight away. A letter wouldn't be quick enough because he knew she'd be at work. So he picked up his phone and he messaged her. My beautiful girl, thank you for your words. I miss you so much. Your powerful mind and your gentle touch. It's been a long time. I'm kind of losing my mind. I haven't been out in a while. And you haven't been round in some time. I get your hesitance. But your absence creates emptiness. Emphasis on the emptiness. Without you, my health isn't the healthiest. Being alone is driving me insane. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I don't want that pretty angel face of yours to be sad. But know this. We'll get through it and we will find our way. After the storm comes the brighter days. And this was all the hope that Sophie needed. Her heart lifted, she smiled and took a deep breath and her whole world looked and seemed different. The following morning was a sunny one and she thought, today is the day that this will all change. Over the next week, she assembled the box. Time for the drop off. As she places it on the floor, he opens up the door. She felt this yearning at her core to reach out and hug him. She just wanted to touch him. He looked in the eyes with the loveliest of smiles. As the tears dropped from his eyes, the restrictions were put aside. She couldn't help it. She had to hold him. I love you, Coco, is what she told him. And for one sweet moment, they embraced and then swiftly unlocked, both knowing that this simple moment of weakness couldn't be repeated. And the weeks that followed, with every doorstep visit, they hugged without touch. They learned to hold each other with a smile, with jokes, with love with hope.